Kukiri Exploratory Course for Grade 7 and 8, Most Essential Learning Competencies. Kukiri Exploratory Course for Grade 7 and 8, Learning Outcome Number 2. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to select and use chemicals for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen equipment and utensils. Clean and sanitize equipment and utensils according to manufacturer's instruction and safely store cleaned equipment in a designated position and area. Our topic is Maintain Kitchen Tools, Equipment, and Working Area. Before we start of the lesson, here are some kitchen quotes and sayings. Everyone has to use this kitchen. Let's keep it nice. Please clean up after yourself. The kitchen rules. If you empty it, fill it. If you dirty it, clean it. If you spill it, wipe it. If you open it, close it and if you cook it share it when your environment is clean you feel happy motivated and healthy care of kitchen tools and equipment any kitchen tools and equipment will last long if given proper care. The stove, sink, and cabinets should be cleaned and sanitized regularly. The garbage can should be kept covered, clean, and emptied often. A clean place is a safe place and a healthy place. Small tools and equipment such as paring and butcher knives, kettles, pots, and other tools should receive regular care of cleaning and sanitizing them after using. Warm water will facilitate removing of grease. The use of vinegar added to water is very good disinfectant and stain or grease remover. Be sure to air dry them before storing because moist utensils will attract cockroaches and wet shelves can develop disagreeable odor. Chemicals used in cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. Cleaning is a process of removing food and other types of soil from a surface, such as a dish, glass, or cutting board. Cleaning is done with a cleaning agent that removes food, soil, or other substances. The right cleaning agent must be selected because not all cleaning agents can be used on a food contact surfaces. A food contact surface is the surface of equipment or utensil that food normally comes into contact. For example, a glass cleaner some metal cleaners and most bathroom cleaners cannot be used because they might leave an unsafe residue on the food contact surface. The label should indicate if the product can be used in the food contact surface. The right cleaning agent must also be selected to make cleaning easy. The following are the cleaning compound used in the kitchen. The first compound are the detergents. These are cleaning agents, solvents, or any substance used to wash tableware, surfaces, and equipment. Example of these are soap, soap powders, cleaners, acids, volatile solvents, and abrasives. The next compound are the solvent cleaners. It is commonly referred to as degreasers. It is used on surfaces where grease has burned on. Ovens and grills are examples of areas that need frequent degreasing. These products are alkaline-based and are formulated to dissolve grease. 
The next compound are the acid cleaners. It should be used periodically in removing mineral deposits and other soils that detergents cannot eliminate, such as scale in washing machines and steam tables, lime buildup on dishwashing machines, and rust on shelving. Examples of these are prosperic acid and nitric acid. These products vary depending on the specific purpose of the product. Another compound are the abrasives. Abrasives are generally used to remove heavy accumulations of soil that are difficult to remove with detergents, solvents, and acids. This product must be carefully used to avoid damage to the surface being cleaned. Other chemicals used for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen equipment and utensils are ammonia, dishwashing liquid, chlorine, carbolic acid, timsen, disinfectants, and soap. The difference between cleaning and sanitizing. Cleaning is the process of removing food and other types of soil from a surface, such as a countertop or plate. Sanitizing reduces the number of pathogens on that clean surface to a safe levels. Sanitizing is done using heat, radiation, or chemicals. Heat and chemicals are commonly used as a method for sanitizing in a restaurant. Radiation is rarely used. The item to be sanitized must be first be washed properly before it can be properly sanitized. Some chemical sanitizers such as chlorine and iodine react with food and soil so will be less effective on a surface that has not been properly cleaned. The following are the sanitizing methods. First is the heat method of sanitizing. There are three methods of using heat to sanitize surfaces. The steam, the hot water, and the hot air. Hot water is the most common method used in restaurants. If hot water is used in the third compartment of a three-compartment sink, it must be at least 171 Fahrenheit or 77 degrees. Cleaned items must be exposed to these temperatures for at least 30 seconds. The next sanitizing methods is by the use of chemical sanitizer. The chemicals that are approved as sanitizers are chlorine, iodine, and quaternary ammonium. The three factors that influence the effectiveness of chemical sanitizers are the concentration, the temperature, and the contact time. In concentration, the presence of too little sanitizer will result in inadequate reduction of harmful microorganisms. Too much can be toxic. For temperature, Generally, chemical sanitizers work best in water that is between 55 Fahrenheit and 120 Fahrenheit. For the contact time, in order for the sanitizer to kill harmful microorganisms, the cleaned item must be in contact with sanitizer, either heat or approved chemical, for the recommended length of time. Sanitizer testing. Every restaurant must have the appropriate testing kit to measure chemical sanitizer concentrations. To accurately test the strength of sanitizing solution, one must first determine which chemical is being used. Chlorine, iodine, or quaternary ammonium. Test kits are not interchangeable, so check with your chemical supplier to be certain that you are using the correct kit. The appropriate test kit must be used throughout the day to measure chemical sanitizer concentrations. Here are some advantages and disadvantages of different chemical sanitizers. For chlorine, the concentration should be 50 ppm in a water between 75 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The contact time is 7 seconds. The advantage of using chlorine as sanitizers that is that 
it is effective on a wide variety of bacteria, it is highly effective and not affected by a hard water, and it is generally inexpensive. The disadvantage of using chlorine is that it is corrosive and irritating to skin. The effectiveness of chlorine decreases with the increase of pH solution. It also deteriorates during storage and when exposed to sunlight. It also dissipates rapidly and loses activity in the presence of organic matter. For the iodine chemical sanitizer, the concentration should be around 12.5 to 25 ppm in a water that is at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The contact time is 30 seconds. The advantage of using iodine as a chemical sanitizer is that it forms brown color that indicates strength. It is also not affected by hard water. It is less irritating to the skin than chlorine and the activity not lost rapidly in the presence of organic matter. The disadvantage of using iodine is that the effectiveness decreases greatly with an increase in pH. It should not be used in water that is 120 Fahrenheit or hotter and it might discolor equipment and surfaces. For the quaternary ammonium compounds, the concentration should be around 200 ppm in a water that is at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The contact time is 30 seconds. The advantage of using quaternary ammonium compounds as a chemical sanitizer is that it is non-toxic, odorless, colorless, non-corrosive, non-irritating, it is also stable to heat and relatively stable in the presence of organic matter and active over a wide pH range. The disadvantage of using quaternary compound is that it is a slow destruction of some microorganism and not compatible with some detergents and hard water. Cleaning and Sanitizing Utensils there are three steps needed to effectively clean and sanitize utensils. First is by washing, then sanitizing, and drying. Utensils such as cutting boards, bowls, and knives need to be thoroughly washed in a warm soapy water. After washing, the utensils should look clean and there should be no food or anything else visible on them. Effective cleaning will remove most of the dangerous bacteria present. Sanitizing will then kill or any organism that might remain in the utensils. A dishwasher is a very effective at sanitizing if it has a hot wash and drying cycle. If you do not have dishwasher, you will need to sanitize in a sink using chemical sanitizer or hot water. If using a chemical sanitizer such as sodium hypochlorite, or quaternary ammonium-based solution, ensure that it can be safely used for sanitizing cooking utensils. Follow the instructions on the container carefully, as different sanitizers work in different ways. If you are using very hot water, take extra care to avoid being scalded. All utensils must be thoroughly dried before they are reused. Air drying is best but tea towels can be used if they are clean. If you are washing up at an event being held outdoors, make sure you have access to plenty of hot water. If hot water is not available, disposable eating and drinking utensils should be used, and enough cooking utensils should be provided up to the last duration of the event so that washing up is not necessary. Next is the cleaning kitchen premises. Cleaning your kitchen regularly is important not only to keep it looking at its best, but also to remove all of the germs and bacteria that accumulate regularly in the kitchen area. 
There are several surfaces around the kitchen, and by making a homemade versatile cleaning solution, you can easily clean most of the surfaces with one basic mixture of household ingredients that are probably already in your kitchen cupboards. Here are some things that you'll need in cleaning kitchen premises. Broom, cleaning rugs, and buckets. Cleaning kitchen premises. Instructions. Number one, collect loose dust by sweeping the kitchen floor daily with a broom or a static sweeper and wiping down countertops, tables, and other surfaces with a cleaning rug. To remove sticky buildup, wipe with a damp cleaning rug and wipe a damp mop over your kitchen floor. Number 2. Mix 1 gallon of warm water in a bucket with 1 half cup white vinegar and 1 teaspoon of dish soap. Dip your mop into the bucket, wring the mop out, and wipe across your kitchen floors. The diluted vinegar solution makes it safe for any kitchen floor surface while still strong enough to clean and disinfect. The dish soap assists in cutting through any food residue that may be on the kitchen floor. Let your floor air dry after cleaning. Number 3. Make an all-purpose cleaner in a spray bottle. Combine 3 cups warm water with 1 half cup white vinegar and 1 teaspoon of dish soap. Number 4. Spray the solution in kitchen surfaces and wipe up with a damp cleaning rug. This works well on any type of kitchen surfaces including cabinets, sinks, tables, counters, and any other area that requires cleaning. And finally, put some small containers without a lid with about one half cup each of baking soda. Place this around your kitchen to absorb odor and keep the kitchen smelling fresh. Open windows to let fresh air circulate, which is especially useful when cooking strong smelling foods. A time to remember. This is Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching.